but for the x. Oh, that's minus three. Record. If we put in x squared minus nine, and we put in x plus three there, right? We graph that, and we get a straight line. And then we put in the simplified version, which is x minus 3. And it does look like we just get the same thing. Okay. Um, now, do you remember what I said before about x minus 3 is a function in its own right? So this, all right, this x minus 3, right, it depends whether it comes from from this or whether it's a function on its own and if it's on its own we obviously have two different things so that's what they're asking you to look at is if we look at the computer all right let's consider that this is the simplification now we've already decided that there are some restrictions to this what are the restrictions so x cannot be positive 3. Negative 3. Why can't x be negative 3? Why can it be positive 3? Well, if, if x is positive 3, because negative 3, then it will be negative 3 plus 3, which is the 9. Yeah. So we can't have that, but we can have positive 3 because that would make 6. The fact that it makes 0 on the top is not an issue, is it? All right, so we know we've got a restriction. So on our calculator, um, is, there, is that visible there? No. Is there any way of determining using our calculator where a restriction might be? Well, yeah, I mean, I could look there, look, that equals zero. If I know that can't equal zero, there is a point. But I can't see it, can I, on my screen? But the thing is, but what, how many, how big is that point? How far would I zoom in? You can't zoom in. Why can't I? Because a line is a series of points. Good. And if you just take away one of those points, it would still look I mean, I guess there's a break in the line, but you can't... You will never see it. Because you can get infinitely close to x being neg yeah. negative 3, right? Yeah. So the computer screen will never have a value that's not there. Right? So you won't be able to see it from the graph. You have to be able to determine this yourself. But what about if I go to table on this calculator? What do you notice? So I'm going to go back to table. I'm going to go back down to auto. I'm going to go to table, which is second and graph. All right, you will then see something. Oh, yeah, it does. Why does it say error? Yeah, it says error next to it. But you'll notice it says it for y1 and not y2. And that's because, look, y1 is the original. But y2 is the simplified version. All right? So what will the computer and calculator do with x minus 3? What will it assume it is? A function in its own right. It will never assume it's the, the result of a simplification. Right? So we need to be aware. We can go to our table of values. The original function will give us our restrictions so for instance if we go um, let's change to the other one so we've got x squared um, and this time it's plus 3x okay and it's over x plus 3 this time and that simplifies to x plus 3 Do we get the same? So what is the restriction on this one? You're going to work spot on hard. Come on. Yeah. 
So I'm looking at negative three, okay? So again, if we graph it, all right? Did I do something wrong? Got x squared plus three x over x plus three. It says which simplifies to x plus three. Yeah. So what, what conclusion can we get from that? So we've got in the book, it says repeat, repeat steps for x squared plus 3x divided by x plus 3. All right, so we've done that. But if we were to simplify this ourselves, right, what do we get? over okay so what is the correct simplified version of this x so if we found another error in the textbook yeah. so actually we should because um textbooks do i think there's some rumor that if you find them and you write to the company there's some kind of payment back you want to right so if i put i'm not going to put x plus three then i'm going to change that to just y equals x and then i can graph it so now well that's a good way of checking whether my simplification is correct because the graph should be the same so what now is the the restriction on this original one so x cannot equal negative three okay so we should be able to confirm that on our calculator all right so if i go to second and table all right that negative three error but y equals x has a value for negative three okay so do you have you picked up or do you remember what this kind of function is called It's a rational function. It's a rational function because of the form it takes as the fraction. Okay. All right. So this is the little bit that we needed to do. All right. Which is you need to be aware that if you graph, all right, if you graph a function and that's a rational function to start with, and then you graph its simplified version. All right, the computers, the graph will not give you the restriction, but the table will give you restriction. There is a way of finding it out. Yeah? I wonder, like, I'm on, um, I'm on Desmos right now, I'm plugging in different, like, different, uh, what are they called, like, fra different fractions with X in it, and I'm trying to find, like, I'm trying to find a line that might have, like, more than like more than just one one thing that's not or one error but like all kind of next to each other so like, like how could you see a break in the line you like, never will will you that's like, the thing if, if, what if there's like a hundred thousand well, points missing even that even a hundred wait but there's even if a hundred thousand points are missing you can't see because you can't see the gap because well no you would so um for instance, if we set our um, our domain as only including certain points, yeah, it would just draw certain points. All right, so you can have lots of gaps. You can have gaps, but that's not really what we're talking about. You you're not going to get. So, for instance, uh, let's just have a quick think. What is it about this rational function that means there will be a gap in the line that we can't see. Okay, so this is the problem, isn't it? Right? With a rational function, Nick, the big thing we've got um, is that you can't do this. That can't happen. All right? Regardless of how the fraction is made up, 
this cannot happen. So you can have as much as you like on the bottom. So for instance, how can you have a different function where there's more than one way of getting zero? So, so let's have a look, for instance, at, well, why don't we graph, Nick, 1 over x squared plus 5x plus 6? Should we all have a go? Let's graph it. So, so far, we've got a linear numerator. So let's just stick a, a 1 on top. How is it two different lines? Yeah. Wait, how is it two different lines? How is what two different lines? One over x squared plus five is two different lines. Three so, different lines, sorry. Okay, well, let's have a look at it. So, x oh, that's squared that's so <laughs> plus five x plus six. I'm hoping you, you would be able, or someone would be able to tell me why. All right. So, what is it then? So we've got this. Um, so forget the straight line because that's not part of it. Um, so what do we have roughly? So we've got a shape that looks like this, right? That there, and this comes down, and then this is here. Right. So why is that happening? It's the 1 over x form, yeah? Um, and what happens? Why are there two? Do you remember what these are called? They're asymptotes, aren't they? Remember, that's an asymptote. And how is an asymptote formed? <laughs> Mine are rubbish, aren't they? How is an asymptote formed? By a value of x that that is not allowed to happen. Same thing with our missing point. So what's the difference between having an asymptote and here? We don't have an asymptote, we just have a single value. So what is the difference? Yeah? But it will get closer and closer to, to doing it, yeah? Why is there two asymptotes, Nick? Uh, Good, because... Remember, it's the fact that x squared plus 5x plus 6 is not allowed to equal 0. So how do we find it does equal 0? We factorise and we get x plus 2 and x plus 3. So the two values are negative 3 and negative 2. Right. Let's try and let's put an, something else in for the numerator instead of 1. Let's do an x plus 3 and graph that. Oh, I see. It's never, never going to touch 3. Okay. Let me just get rid of this one. All right. So this time, so what I've said to you is we'll take the same basic one, but this time we're going to graph... What is it? x plus 3 over x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, so we still get, and we've got to be careful even more so here, we've got to be careful because if I sketch the initial function, all right, we get what you've just seen. What kind of shape is that? Same thing we were just looking at, isn't it? It's a, um, yeah, so we've got how many asymptotes? Well, how many x asymptotes have we got? Just one? So if we only got the x cannot equal which one? Where is it? Well, let's have a look on our graph. Um, how can I find it? Well, I can see actually there it's at 2, right? 
Got that, so we've got x can't equal negative 2. You see it on my graph. Is that it then? So why negative 3 as well? That's not my graph. I'm fine. That's what you're saying. But that's not here, look. Here's negative 3. I don't have the problem. So up here, look, it was clear where the problem was. Why is it not there now? Surely it should still be there. Just because I've changed the top, the bottom is still x plus 2, x minus 3. Oh, sorry, x plus 3. I still have the x can't be minus 2. Good. But it can't. But why? Where has it gone? Yeah. So what does this simplify to? This simplifies to 1 over x plus 2. So this is where, Nick, this one has a nice and clear asymptote, which is the value that we can't have. But there is another hole. There is a hole here. But again, we can't see it. All right? Because this is one that we'll simplify. But how do we see it? Well, Zoe has already said, well, if we go to the table, look, we've got negative 2, negative 3. They're both errors still, even though we can't see it as an asymptote. So is there any way of having three? Yes. What? If you square the x, then add an x. Oh, three add? Yeah. Well, I tell you what, why don't we try with what does... You can have four let's do one divided by... Do this. x plus four, x minus three, x plus two. Put it in like that into your calculator. What do you get? So this one here, we had three asymptotes. We can see them all. They're the values that can't be zero. But if we do this one, how many asymptotes should we still have? Three. One, two, three. But if we actually graph it, and hopefully you're now getting the idea, is that we actually end up with how many asymptotes on the screen? One. Just the one, right? So we have the one that is at negative two. All right, and which way around does it go that way around? Yeah, yeah that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so it just looks like a 1 over x on its own, uh, and there is only one asymptote. But how many restrictions are there again? Three. Three still. The restrictions in this should still be x is not allowed to equal negative 4, x is not allowed to equal negative 2, and x is not allowed to equal positive 3. But according to our graph, we only see one, negative which is the negative two one, right? So then where are the other two? Well, they're there because... Exactly. So if you factorise this, you get x plus four x minus 3. So if I then do this... Still sorry, I'm doing something at the moment. I'll come back to a sec. Yeah. Right? These will cancel out, and I am left with just the 1 over x plus 2. That's what I've got. So this graph has a form of 1 over x, which is why I've got two things. Right, 1 over x, anything of that form looks like this with a 1 asymptote. But as we will see again, if we go to our table, all right, how many are there? So I've got error, minus 4, error, negative 2, and I should also have an error at 3. So you do have to be really, really careful especially on something like, I guess, an e-assessment where you are on technology and they say, right, graph this, right? They might even just give you the graph and the function and say, how many restrictions are there? And you'll look at it and go, oh, there's one asymptote, so there's one restriction. But your graph will not show you these errors. They're not these an on-screen calculator, yeah, so you can't bring anything in with you, all right? But you have to be careful with them. Make sense? So that was important. That's why we wanted to use it. Nick, did you have a question that you were well, pushing on to us? Pretty much just that. But on like this, it just shows you. It's like if you click exactly 
Exactly there. It says like negative four and then undefined. Yeah. Well, that Desmos just does what my table on my calculator does, but in a different way. Uh, if you just click on the exact point, it like shows it as a clear point and then it's yeah. a human a lot. Yeah, if you can type in x equal, you know, select negative four, it will tell you an undefined. So even on the curve, it will tell you there is an undefined point. Now, so when I click there, for instance, if I can get onto negative three exactly, it's fine, it's got a point there. I know it's got a point, but, oh, but just... if there was an undefined point, it would, as Nick's saying, if you could click on it, it would say undefined, if you could get spot on oh, it, okay. yeah? All right, so that's my, my little thing.